Hey, is this thing on? <laughs> hey, Sid, what do you say? What you want to learn today? I want to know why things happen and how and want to know everything now. Oh, yeah. How does this thing work? Why does that stuff change? How does that do what it just did? Hmm, what's up with the sky? You think I could fly? The world is spinning and I want to know why. I got a lot of questions and big ideas. I'm Sid, the science kid. Hey kids, it's Sid, Sid the Science Kid. Today we're learning about energy and work. Now, what is the scientific definition of work? Basically work is a force and emotion moving in the same direction, Sid. What? Oh, so it's like force and then motion moving in the same direction to move it somewhere. So for example, if I take Melvin here, and I go move him up, that would be work. Like this. Work. I know that force is measured in newtons, and that the distance is measured in meters. But what is work measured in? Hey, I think it's called a joule, Sid. Oh yeah, joules. One newton and one meter equals one joule. Work is the transfer of energy. Teach us about energy, Sid. Okay. There are two different kinds of energy. Potential energy and a kinetic energy. For example, this rock has potential energy because it has the potential to be kinetic energy. This rock has kinetic energy because it is in motion. Right now, this has potential energy because it has the potential to have kinetic energy. If it were to fall off the table, it would have kinetic energy. Like that. Same with this. Or this. And even this. Oh, I get it. So like a car. When it's not moving, it has potential energy. But when it is moving, it has kinetic energy. So the other day, my really short science teacher asked me, when friction works on an object in motion, what form of energy is always produced? I said kinetic energy. Now, is that right? No, you're not right, Sid. The correct answer is heat. Where there's friction, there's always heat. Oh, really? Hey, Sid, teach us about Newton's three laws. Here, I'll help you out. Newton's first law of motion says, An object at rest will remain at rest unless acted on by an unbalanced force. An object in motion continues in motion with the same speed in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. This means that objects just keep doing what they're doing even if they've hit a balanced force. Look at the example. Here is your unbalanced force and see how it continues in motion? This is the law of interior. Newton's second law of motion has to do with acceleration. Acceleration is produced when the force acts on a mass. The greater mass of the object being accelerated, the greater the amount of force needed to accelerate the object. When I try to push this car, it does not accelerate because I need more force, because it has lots of mass. I can easily push this laundry basket because there's not much force needed to accelerate it because it doesn't have much mass. And now for Newton's final law of motion, it is, for every action there is, there is an equal and opposite reaction. What does this mean? For every reaction, there's an opposite reaction in the equal size. Look at me pushing on my skateboard. When I push backwards, that's the action. The reaction is the board going forwards. See the science kid, energy and work, as in Newton, yeah, the laws. See the science kid, energy and work, as in Newton, yeah, the laws, two rappers. See the science kid, energy and work, as in Newton, yeah, the laws. See the science kid, 
and it didn't work. I just need it. Yeah. What's the best?